Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Brian, this is All Your Tech. Today I'm gonna to show you how to scale a 3D printed suit so that it actually fits on your body. Let's jump right into it. Now, a couple months ago, my son came to me and he wanted to build a 3D printed entire Mark 85 Iron Man suit. Huge undertaking, and I knew from the start that this was gonna be a heck of a project, but he wants it done by Halloween and I can see we're so, so close. But I wanted to take you through the steps that we've gone through to actually get this set up and going. The very first thing you wanna know is, if you're gonna undertake something like this, you wanna start with a solid quality 3D model in the first place. So we went to DO3D. I suggest you use something paid versus free if you're gonna take on a project like this, just because the quality and the thought and detail that's gone into it is quite a bit better than most of the free models I've seen out there. So. With that out of the way, the other thing we're gonna do is, since my son is 11 years old, obviously straight out of the package, the scaling is gonna be all wrong for the suit. It's designed for somebody who's I think six foot or six foot two. Obviously my son is a couple feet shorter than that. So there's a program called Armorsmith. Now, Armorsmith costs about $35 and really it's the only thing on the market that's gonna allow you to really easily do this. So highly recommend you just pick up a copy. And with that out of the way, I'm gonna jump right into the UI and I'm gonna show you how to scale those 3D prints. Let's do it. So as you can see, we've loaded up Armorsmith. Now, the very first thing you do after you load up Armorsmith, it takes you through a step-by-step -step tutorial to build this avatar. This avatar here is obviously, it's as it looks, it's a representation of you or whoever else you're trying to fit this suit of armor to. So in my case, we went through and we measured every single point that's referenced on the model with my son. So we just used some measuring tape, some of the stuff that you use normally for fabric measuring or for measuring clothes for people. You wanna wear something tight fitting so that it, it doesn't have a lot of extra you know, bagginess to the clothing so that you can get a, a tight measurement. You might also wanna measure a couple of these pieces two or three times. We found that the head was actually a little bit off the way we measured it. So doing two or three measurements, kind of taking an average of that seemed to be the best way. So once you've gone ahead and you've measured out this avatar and you've got a, a pretty happy representation of yourself, the next thing is to start loading in some of the pieces. And that's over in this right hand column, we're just gonna go to import. When you click on import, it's gonna pull up a list of all of your different Iron Man parts. And you can see that DO3D at least breaks everything down into upper body, lower body, and arc reactor. So we're gonna go to upper body to start with, and you can see there it has chest, helmet, fingers, and all the uh, biceps, so your arms and, and hands and such. We'll start with the helmet. I think that's the easiest to sort of get a, a touch and feel for the program with. And we're just gonna left click, shift, and select all the parts. We're gonna open them. And then a dialog is gonna pop up that's gonna ask us if we wanna import these as a group. Yes. So what you do is you can just name the group. So we'll name it helmet. You can name it whatever you want, of course. And what it's gonna do here is it's gonna go ahead and import each of those individual STL files, but it's gonna group them together so that they're assembled as a full helmet. And then we can go ahead and start attaching it to the mannequin and resizing it. So this part takes just a minute, because again, it has to load and process every single STL file that you selected. So we'll just wait a second. Awesome, now that that's out of the way, you can go ahead and expand the helmet group and you can see all the different pieces that are in it. If you click on one of them with the left click, you can see that you get a preview of the STL file associated with it. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is with helmet selected, and you can see the full helmet there when you select that, we're gonna go ahead and click attach. And this is pretty cool. You can see that there's kind of a ghost image of the 3D object that's in the group. And then there's all these sort of connection spaces predefined you know, throughout the torso, arms, legs, and head for the 3D model. So we're gonna select the one that's kind of closest. Seems to be this one that's kind of in the upper part of the head. And we'll just left click. That's going to attach the model to that section. Now you can see that it's not quite right. Your nose is sticking out, your cheeks, your chin. And so when we select the object, we can right click and then there's a whole bunch of options. So you can translate the part, you can rotate the part. Translating is just moving it on you know, the X, Y, or Z axis. So we're gonna start with that. 
So we select translate, and then we can go ahead and move this forward until the face isn't hanging out. We wanna make sure that we rotate around the back. We don't obviously want the back of the head to face out of this either. Now, we can also move it down quite a bit, it looks like. And once we're approximately happy with that, one of the tips that I'm gonna share with you is to change the opacity. So the visibility or how transparent this object is. And so we'll go ahead and take it down to like, let's say 50%. Hit enter and you can see the, the option is just right over here and actually it should be 00 0.50. There we go. And you see that makes it transparent so that you can see through the object and you can see the mannequin underneath. And you can see we've got a ton of room in this thing. So we can go ahead and go to translate it a little bit more, move it down, and then we can move it back a little bit. So there we have it. That's pretty well centered around there, I would say, but it's obviously still huge on my son's head. So next thing we can do is, again, with this object selected or the group of objects selected, you can go to scale part. Now there's three options that come up, uniform, non-uniform, and shrink fit. Uniform just shrinks in all three axes uniformly, kind of as the name implies. Non-uniform, you can actually select one of the axes, so X, Y, or Z, and you can shrink along those axes. I'd be careful with that because what ends up happening is you can skew the dimensions of the object and make it look funky. So I would try to do uniform scaling as much as possible. The other thing you could do, once you've got this sort of centered really nicely like we do here, you can do shrink fit. So we'll go ahead and hit that. What shrink fit does is it kind of algorithmically tries to shrink the helmet uniformly but it shrinks it until the mannequin hits one of the 3D objects at one of the points. So it's not gonna shrink it uniformly around the whole head, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna shrink it until it hits one of the points on the mannequin. So this takes just a minute because it's kind of computationally expensive to do this. So we'll let it do its thing and see what happens. All right, there we go, that finally finished. Honestly, it took like five minutes. I wouldn't even use that in most cases just because it takes so long. We had a really powerful computer here too, 12 core AMD with an RTX 3090 and it still takes forever to do the shrink fit, but it did shrink it down some, so you know, whatever, there's some use to that. So we'll go ahead and go back to scale part and we'll do uniform. And you can see it only scaled it down about 2%. And that's because it looks like Mm, trying to see, maybe one of the cheeks or the ears or something. Yeah, I think it's, it might be the ears hit one of the sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of shrink this down a little bit more. And we're gonna do the, the uniform shrinking here and we'll take it down to maybe like 93%. That looks pretty good. Now the other thing you need to think about, you gotta kind of plan ahead when you're doing this stuff. Cause you're gonna need to fit electronics in here. So especially in the Iron Man suit, in the helmet, there's gonna be a servo motor right here above the widow's peak, actually two servo motors and a hinge. And so you wanna make sure that there's plenty of room when you're done with this to still fit it on your head. So if all else fails, you know, scale up just slightly, you'd rather be a little too big than a little too small. This, I've already got the finished, well, semi-finished. We've sanded and we've started to prime this thing. You can see that you know, right here, the electronics are gonna go right up in here. This is the, gonna be the servo motors. And then this is gonna pivot up and down this face electronically using an Arduino. And uh, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Another tip for the Iron Man mask in particular is this is a very slim, tight fitting mask. You are not gonna be able to print this in a way that it actually slides over your head from the bottom up. Cause it's just the dimensions of it the neck narrows down and it just makes that impossible. So what we've done is kind of something clever here. We've actually used magnets. And so what we've done is we've attached the jaw, this kind of chin piece, and then these ears we've all glued together. And then we've got the kind of top section of the helmet. And you can see here we've got these neodymium magnets, rare earth magnets, which are pretty powerful on the side. And then we've also got those inside here. And the cool thing is, this just kind of magnetically snaps together, so it's still easy to get on and off. There we go. And there you have it. It stays pretty secure. I mean, this isn't coming off very easily, and it's everything you would want it to be. So that's tip and trick for the helmet. 
The cool thing is once you've gone and you've scaled this, you can just come over here and if you see the helmet in the parts section on the left hand side here, you can right click and you can export model or move part. Now in our case, we're gonna, we're gonna actually select the helmet and it should actually be helmet one. My apologies, I had a, another helmet in here earlier. You can go to export model and it'll show all the individual pieces. And so what you're gonna wanna do is, and this kind of sucks, this takes a minute, but you're gonna select chin piece and then you're gonna save it individually. You're gonna select the next piece, save it. That's gonna save all the STL files so that you can load them in your slicer of choice and export them over to your printer. Now for some of the arm pieces, chest pieces, the really big bulky pieces, what if your print bed isn't big enough to actually print the thing to the scale that you have it at? Well fortunately if you check my videos you'll see that I have a video about cutting the pieces into sections and then I've got another video about gluing and sanding them so that you can bring it all back together. Because I've got a Prusa Mark 3S and some of the pieces are just too big for the print bed, but we've made it work. We've printed the chest, the back, all that big stuff already. So that's the basics. Now, obviously there's a lot more you can dive into, but really, if you can do that, you can rotate the parts, you can move them and scale them. That's most of what you need to do in order to get this to be successful. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions. I'm happy to do a follow-up video in more detail on any of the subjects, so just let me know. Otherwise, We'll see you next time. Thank you all so much. Happy 3D printing.